Here we have a problem from multivariable calculus. We're given a function of two variables, f, the variables are x and y, and we're asked to determine the location and the nature of the critical points of f. So what that means is we want to find out where the critical points are and what kind of behaviour they lead to in our f. Local min, a local max, or something in between, a saddle point. Okay. Now when we talk about critical points, critical points is just a point where the first partial derivatives of our f are equal to zero. Okay, that means that the surface will have a sort of horizontal tangent plane at that point, or those points. Okay, and to determine the nature of the critical points, we use a test called the second derivative test. Okay, so that's, a, that's an important test for um, functions of several variables. So let's work through it. It's a step by step process. The first part of this problem is to determine where the critical points lie. All right, so let's remind ourselves that the critical points of F, they occur when the two partial derivatives of F are zero. F's a polynomial, so it's very well behaved. It's nice and smooth. So we don't have to worry about any strange behaviour. Okay, so there's two equations there. We want to solve them. Okay, so let's solve. Let's calculate these partials, and we will solve. All right, so let's calculate df dx. Imagine y is a constant and differentiate with respect to x. Okay, so that'll become a 12x. This will become a negative 6x squared. This will become 0. And this will become 6x. OK? What about df dy? Oh, sorry, 6y. Thank you. 6y, because we're making x, x a constant. Thank you. So let's differentiate now. Hold all the x's constant and differentiate with respect to y. Well, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 6y, and this is going to be 6x. All right. So let's set these equal to 0, and then we can solve them. Now, the, So basically, you've got two simultaneous equations. The challenge is to solve them efficiently. You can do this all sorts of ways. Um, you can simplify this to get x equals negative y, and then sub that back into the first equation to make it purely x, uh, x variables in there. OK? So you could say, oh, yeah, OK, y equals negative x. Replace y up there with uh, negative x, and then simplify or you can take one equation away from the other all right that's what I'm going to do I'm going to um, uh, just get y in terms of X there and just sub it in there okay so if you do that so let's say that that's one and that's two two goes into one we'll get the following that negative 6x squared will be there, and we'll get a 6x equals 0. So what do I get down to? I can cross off the 6s, and I can factor out a uh, common factor of, um, of x. So I'll get something like this. Uh, x, so 1 minus x. OK? Yeah. Oh, no, the 6s can. Can cancel, all right? Yeah, well, okay. You want to do that? Hence, x equals 0 or x equals 1. So, what I need to do now is go back and find the corresponding y points for those, or y values for those x values. Okay? So, if, say, x equals 0, 
Then say two gives gives y equals zero if x equals one. Then two gives y equals uh, negative one. Okay, so we now have our points, our our critical points are at the origin and at the point uh, one negative one. Okay, so that's the first part of this problem done. The second part is where you want to show, okay, well, what are their nature? At those points, what happens with our surface or our function of two variables? Do you get a local minimum, a local maximum, or something in between, a point of inflection, which is kind of like a, um, yeah, you can re relate that back to high school maths where you talk about, yeah, a point, a point of inflection. Okay, so um, in, in this setting we call it a saddle point. All right, so let's classify, classify our, our points now. So this is part two. Classify the nature of our points, our critical points, via the second derivative test. Okay, so with second derivative test, you would think, oh, I need a second derivative. Yes, yes you do. So in part one, we only calculated the first derivatives. Let's calculate the second derivatives. So by this, I'm, I mean the second order, well, I guess I can write it both ways. Second order derivative of f with respect to x. So. If I go up here and differentiate with respect to x, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a 12 there. I'm going to get a minus 12x there, and that's it. Okay? If I calculate the second partials with respect to y, going from that derivative and differentiating with respect to y, I'll go, that'll become 6, that'll become 0. And what about the mixed partial? Okay, that's d squared f, say, uh, dy dx. Doesn't matter which order you do them. Let's take this derivative and differentiate it with respect to y. So I get a 6 there. Now, given that information, I can combine them to form what's known as a discriminant. Okay, all right. So the discriminant. D is defined as the following. Okay? It is the, the second order non mixed partials multiplied together minus the square of the mixed partial. Now that'll change depending on what point you're at. Okay? So that discriminant D really depends on it, the two things, X and Y. So let's go through systematically and work out what. what um, uh, what happens at our two points. So there's our two points. So let's go at 0, 0. What's going to happen? What we want to do is test D at 0, 0. And there's another part to the second derivative test. We want to test this partial as well. Okay, so let's... Okay, so um, let me just uh, put that in. That's going to be um, 12 minus 12x times f sub y y, which is times 6, and that is minus uh, 6 squared, Okay, which I can uh, simplify if I want to. All right, so let's go up here and put in x equals 0 and y equals 0. What am I going to get? That, well, that, that's going to be 0, so I'm going to get 12 times 6 minus 36. Okay? That's positive. Okay, well, it's 36, and, and the important thing is that it's positive. Okay? Now, also, we look at the second order partial. I think I said the first before. I meant the second. 
the, se the second order partial with respect to x at 0, 0. So there's my second order partial. That's 12 minus 12 times 0. That's 12, which is positive. So I have a positive discriminant and a positive second order partial derivative. If you look up the second derivative test, what does that mean? Well, it means that the point leads to a local minimum. Okay, a local minimum. Let's take the other tet, the other point. At uh, one negative one, I want to test this discriminant again and look at the second order partial with respect to x. Okay, so um, when x equals 1, that's going to be 12 minus 12, which is 0. I'm going to get negative 36, which is less than 0. Now, you could have a look at f sub x. You don't need to, because in this case, you already know it's, it's, it's negative. And by... So that's enough. This yields a saddle point.